as a play. This is Dan Jurgis, Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am Tyler, the man of tomorrow, the Superman of blue. And I am here with the man of steel himself, the Superman of red, the He-Man of He-Mans, Mr. James Cole. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good good inside messenger joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just get into it. I mean, come on. This week has been packed full of stuff like <laughs> so let's just get into it i mean it's it's crazy how much stuff happens quickly um we got just going straight for it we got a interesting trailer that Zack snyder released that was like a not really a trailer as much as like a piece of art <laughs> um yeah, right it, it was called the origin of the mother box and it's like the mother box and it has images and Easter eggs and it's going around to this Tom Waits song and it shows all the different, you know, leaguers and it's, it's really neat. Um, you know, I heard like someone pointed out, like if they had done this as the mini series, you could see this as like the opening credits. If you think about like, how an HBO series like game of Thrones or whatever has like that opening credits, like this could have been your, opening credits for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah. I was, I was like, that I've makes sense. That. I mean, that makes sense, but, I mean, it's it's neat to watch. Um, it'd be something, like, it's not very long, so I was thinking, like, oh, this could be something they may play during the intermission. Um, but, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I mean, it's only, like, uh, that's, it was only, like, two minutes, and, and um, you know, the intermission, they said, like, Junkie XL wrote like ten minutes worth of music for the intermission, um, and uh, I mean it just the all the all the Easter eggs, all the pieces uh, that you can pick out through all six sides of the mother box for all six members of the league. Um, the the imagery the imagery is great. Um, all the uh, iconic poses from art like Batman and St. Bernard and, and, um, Neptune or, or Poseidon, mm-hmm. um, for Aquaman and Joan of Arc and uh, a couple others. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's art. That's why I said like, um, yeah, I heard somebody say it would be really cool if that was the, Um, like the, like the DVD or the Blu-ray menu where that just played Mm. in the background while you, you know, made your, made your choices for your, your options to play and stuff. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, it's extremely artistic. Um, so that happened. And then today... They dropped the first of what will be six mini character trailers, and today's was Batman, and we got a poster of just Batman, um, and it looks like, and we also got two other posters for uh, Justice League that are very similar to some of the images we had saw before, um, you know, of how they stood and stand, so it kind of gives you an idea of what you know, because it's gray, it says Zack Snyder's Justice League, it's in black and white, and, you know, you look at it and like, oh, okay, like, it's not new photos, you can tell, like, these were photos that were taken and had kind of been used in other promotional material before, um, you know, uh, but it's, it's just nice to see, you know, because it just feels real... Um, like this is what we should have saw, but yeah, I mean, we're two weeks away. Yeah. 
from from today. At well, this time in two weeks exactly, I've probably watched it twice by now. Yeah, I'm, twice. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for at least three. Like I told Janiya last night that I'm getting. Well, if it comes out at like nine a.m., it might be hard to get three in. I mean, we're exactly twelve hours away. You might be able to complete three if you watched it back to back to back. <laughs> I have nothing else to do with my life. Um, but yeah, so this Batman trailer was pretty awesome because we got this. You know, we got a, a long gargoyle shot that we had all had you know once seen and loved, and then we got the shot of him like a slow pan on the tank. And then we got a shim, a shot of him coming up from where they had been fighting, I guess, Steppenwolf. And, you know, Superman pulls him up to where the rest of them are. And Superman's in the black suit. And that was just awesome to actually see, you know, them all kind of moving and interacting. And it's, a, it's one of those scenes that we've kind of half seen before, but not really. But the most exciting part that you pointed out in this trailer was what, James? Um, well, you get uh, the reveal of Darkseid's voice in this trailer. When it's panning around Batman on the tank, he says, I'm coming for my great prize. He does. I believe it's pretty close to that. And who else's voice do we hear? Uh, Martian Manhunter. You get to hear Henry Swanwick. That was the one that got me excited first. Because I've been waiting for anything with Martian Manhunter. Right. Actually, I picked up on the Dark Side one, and you picked up on the Martian Manhunter one. I didn't hear that. That's because we worked together. The first couple of times I watched it. (laughs) That's because we worked together. So it was great. And I'm just wondering, like, and we got to hear some new dialogue from Jesse Eisenberg. That was pretty cool. Yes, it was. I'm just curious about how soon uh, they'll come up, you know. It's not like the in three days, in two days. So now I'm like, how quickly will these character um, trailers come out now that, you know, we're 14 days away? Well, I mean, what do, what do we have in this Batman trailer? We have three shots. Mm-hmm. We we have the gargoyle stance, which we've already seen, the the tank, which we've already seen. It was just slightly extended, and and this shot that we've partly seen um, before uh, in a different way. Yes, that's it. So. If we have, if he drops one of these every day and it's like three little scenes, um, I mean, it might be something we've seen and a couple new things or something, but. Uh, I'm just saying like the space of time, because you can't do it like day by day, because then you'll, like, do you do it every other day? Because you want to kind of build it up to the day. You don't want to just hear six days worth of trailers and then like nothing for a week. So. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, there was all, there was um, speculation that he that there will be another trailer to be released. Well, I mean, um, that would be a week. From, <laughs> they said the eighth was like the original thing, and you know, people rumors were so. That's only. No, well, who ago. knows? I mean, maybe we've got this countdown here starting today. Six days, one for each character, and then on a seventh day, one week out from the thing, we get one the one last trailer, and it's one week away, and we finally get Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think that's a that'd be a heck that's, of a that's a hell of a marketing play right there, like seven days worth of of stuff leads you up to one week out. I'm in. <laughs> I mean, I'm you know it's like we can't record every day, but you know. So next time we record, we'll probably have a couple of these to discuss. Well, we're definitely going to get one more, certainly one more um, news episode with whatever comes out up until 
the release. Mm hmm. Yep. So we also got, oddly enough, we got an, a what what I thought was funny a highly CW'd over, over photoshopped poster for Superman and Lois. I can see this being like the cover art for the first DVD release. But I, I mean, I like it. I just hate that it looks so photoshopped. It's the four, it's the four of them in a cornfield. And he's in his Superman suit, and his cape, you know, is whirled around him, and there's Lois. And then they each have a kid on the outside. It is... Uh, well, the the back of comic books this week's got Superman and Lois on there, and you've got the scene where it looks like he's flying away from the farm, and the boys on the right, and Clark and Lois on the upper left. See, I, I, like, I mean, I like that one. But yeah, it's all just... Uh, it's interesting, you know, that it just looks so super photoshopped. But, oh, the other thing we almost didn't mention for Justice League is it was revealed that Justice League, and I, this goes back to, you know, when it was going to be a miniseries or whatever, it's going to be in six chapters. Part one, don't count on it, Batman. Part two, the Age of Heroes. Part three, beloved mother, beloved son. Part four, change machine. Part five, all the king's horses. And part six, something darker. Well, that sounds neat. Yeah. And you know what? That sounds like a, um, <laughs> a Zack Snyder structured film anyways. Um, mm hmm he, he he never he is not a three x structure kind of dude. He he plays it. He plays all of his movies um, multiple chapters, multiple um, multiple acts. I mean, if there's at least four to five, and, and the longer the movies are, I mean, we got six here. I mean, I just feel like. Each chapter is going to be. It's going to be powerful. Um, well, I think we can glean some things from these uh, from these chapters. What we might see or in it, that type of stuff. Well, the mother and son is cyborg. I'm pretty sure. I think. It could be cyborg. It could also have something to do with the resurrection of Superman and his mother. See, that was my first thought. Could then, be both. Yeah, I mean. You know, um, I mean, we got four hours. There is a lot of story to tell uh, with a lot of the, with a lot of characters. Especially, I mean, you know, you have three, technically three brand new characters, if you're looking at it correctly. Um, it would have been Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg. If you're looking at coming straight from BVS. So, I mean, just introducing those characters, much less the threat and getting the team together is a is work to do, period. So, um, I think it's going to be something very unique as a film. Very, very unique. Um... In other news, ta -dum, ta -dum, we got the return of the Flash. Did you watch it? I only caught like the last ten minutes. What the heck, man? <laughs> All right, this doesn't really spoil anything, but there's a quick line where Barry mentions Clark. He he mentions uh, something that Clark had uh, referenced to him. So that was pretty cool. Mm. And I was like, yeah. And uh, other than that, I think, I feel like the premiere of Flash did well. Um, I feel like it was, it quickly was trying to pick up where we left off, but at the same time, move us forward. You know, with kind of probably some of the plot and subplot that would have been the end of last season. 
just right. just kind of retooled for now. Um, and yeah, uh, I want to check it out. I've um, you know, I've I've watched the Flash uh, entirely up to this point. I just wasn't home in time to watch it. Um, I got to see Harry and what happened at the end um, and flash running and stuff, uh, saving the, getting the bomb off of the, the ship or whatever. So cool. It was, so, it was pretty cool. Um, I know, with, I know. And yeah, yeah, I heard that. Um, but, uh, Another bit of Flash news saw that there's going to be 18 episodes this season. So that's actually less than typical. And I'm sure it's partly, I'm sure it's because of COVID, you yeah. know, restrictions that, on shooting time and that, everything else. Or they're just restructuring. Like, you know, with, with like with Superman and Lois, one thing was they wanted to put more money into it. They wanted to give it a higher budget, but less um, episode order so they can stretch that budget, you know, and maybe that's what they're doing with the flash, you know, peeling back the episodes. So with that, you know, the, the amount of money that they're giving, they can get more out of each episode. Yeah. Well, it's about time. You know, we, we've discussed that for a number of years, how, you know, they could take the episode count down by, like six to eight episodes and, and funnel that budget into the rest of the episodes and improve the, the quality of the storytelling with less filler. I did. I will say that the flash, uh, they did drop a line that was kind of a quick, um, way to kind of, you know, make you not think like, yeah, it was basically something like, yeah, Sue and Ralph were like deep undercover because of this. They had to go into hiding. Okay. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, Ralph. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I mean, it is and it isn't. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, that's... That's wild. I mean, that, just, that's what they're going to have to do, you know what I mean? Just write him out of the show. I mean, we yeah, everybody's discussed how he could be... Um, how because of his shape shifting abilities he could be played by somebody else for a for a goodbye but um yeah they what i read said that like for the first half of the season is going to be one villain and the second half is going to be another so that's good I mean, yeah it would uh, be nice to a, a few less episodes hopefully like we said we get rid of a a little bit of the filler stuff you know, you know? That, that's kind of like what they did last season or they kind of done where they did blood work and then uh, mirror master. So but we'll stop. Talking well, that Flash. was like the structure they had mm -hmm. during the last uh, season and a half or two of air uh, about season and a half of arrow kind of split it up between a couple of villains. So. I think that it's, it, you know, I think it's smart to do that. Um, it just, it kind, of, cause it kind of gives you, like you said, that short, it makes you feel like you're having a shorter season, even though it's a longer season. But anyways, on the other side, we got our second episode of Superman and Lois. And it did not disappoint. What were your what was your initial thoughts? Just overall general of this episode. Episode two. Um, yeah, episode two. Uh I I thought it was a great episode. Um you know, uh more of the same from the first. Um really good chemistry, uh nice uh the the relationships, uh Clark and Lois, we got to see more of them together. We got to see more of Lois this episode. Um, the boys, uh, uh, bumping heads as well as, um, protecting each other, saying that they always got the, each other's back and, uh, yeah, it's, it was, a uh, another really good episode. 
I'm glad to see the uh, cinematography, the 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 way the show looks is consistent. That's like the one thing I'm. I don't want to say I'm concerned about, but you know the the pilot and this episode were same director and crew, like and the same cinematographer. And I'm like, okay. So the next episodes where I'm kind of like, okay, now what? You know, the first episode was very flash, flashy, like cinematic, and then you know after this episode we start to slide into that more, you know, weekly series, uh, CWisms, you know, right. So, but it kept that you know it kept that great look for heritage. And, you know, this is where we started to see the, like, the problems we had talked about. And we'll just kind of go character by character and kind of break it down. We won't go beat by beat by beat like we've done before. Um, this episode, actually, before we go into characters, like, it had deleted scenes that were pretty prominent. Because, I mean, the next day I saw people posting, like, here was a deleted scene. Because if you watch the, the um, streaming version, the, the scenes are in there. And I was like, what? Huh? Okay, let's go check this out. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I saw on the CW app, it does say extended episode. And I was just kind of like, wow. Like, And then I kind of thought, like, man, why can't they have just shown the first two episodes together as, like, a legit two-hour premiere instead of all the filler that we got? Um, and... You know, even the one scene that was cut that I, the one that I noticed was the Clark at the, I almost said the Langs, but it's the Cushing's barbecue. And he says, it's time, I wish I could get drunk, you know? Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, at times like this, I wish I could get drunk. Something like that from the trailer. Mm hmm. So I was the one that was like, oh. That one wasn't. I don't recall seeing that one on my um, on my streaming one. Yeah, that's what but I was it does have the it does have the other one the um, the scene with General Lane. Ah, uh, good old. Um, what do you call it? Good old General Lane. Uh. I liked in this episode that, okay, so we'll start with Jordan, or I mean Jonathan. I liked in this episode that we started to get what I thought we would, where, you know, he, he's in Smallville. He's, you know, he tried to talk to his um, girlfriend. You know, I figure she's going to leave him. And, you know, he's going out for football, and we see that he didn't get his playbook, that the, the team is picking on him. And because of his brother, and he has a little resentment about this now. Um, I, 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 I'm interested to see if we're going to get some sort of budding quasi love triangle between Sarah and the Kent boys. Um, I kind of hope we don't, just because I feel like that's, I don't know, it's kind of played out, but. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, John, you know, Jonathan didn't have a whole lot in this, but we do see that John is a lot more similar to his mom than what, you know, you you think. Like, yeah, when, they they both left um, everything that they had behind um, the Daily Planet in Metropolis, um, his. Life. Budding football career, his life, his football, his girlfriend. Um, they they all moved out there for, I mean, for Clark and Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Clark's family farm and and Jordan's uh, anxiety and his his new newly budding powers. Um. Uh, I just made me think of something I, I shared today um, that uh, someone put as a theory, and I guess as a working fan theory, that the boys' powers, they work off of each other. 
like when they're apart, they really don't have powers, but when they're together, it's like they manifest powers. I thought that could be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, if they got different powers, it'd be kind of cool if they were working in conjunction to do things like together, them together equal, you know, what Superman could have done or like what Clark used to do in Smallville kind of thing. Exactly. Um, Lois. Okay. So in this episode, we got to see more Lois Lane. I feel like in the pilot, you know, Lois was very kind of secondary. Um, you know, you're doing a lot in the pilot, but in this, we got to see her step up and we, she goes to a town hall meeting and I like that, you know, she stands up cause Morgan edge is there. And before she goes, Clark is like, you know, he says, you know, don't get involved. She's like, I'm just going to watch and listen, you know. And Morgan Ed shows up and she jumps in. And it's interesting they, how they frame her very, very uh, symmetrical, you know, front, mid frame. Um, and, you know, she starts raising questions about Morgan Edge and his purpose in Smallville. And Edge turns it on her. And starts, you know, basically recanting, well, maybe Smallville is not the place that I thought it was that needed my help that, I, you know, and so then all of the people are starting to freak out. So he's slowly turning the town against her, you know, and then I, I messaged you guys and I was like, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if Morgan Edge does help Smallville out of spite for Lois just to make her look bad? Like, he does everything he said he would just so he can, like, discredit Lois and make her look bad. Right. Um, I, I was like, that that could be... Uh, really it'd easy. certainly be a way to go. Because, I mean, you wouldn't expect that. Like, she's, you know, because she's beating the drum about how bad Morgan Edge is and what he did. And she brings up the other town... You know, that he supposedly helped, and then he rebuttals with, well, the mines weren't what we thought they were, and, you know, this happens, and this happens, and he gives a very political answer, and then later at the barbecue, Kyle brings it back up, he's like, well, yeah, I looked into that, and you can definitely tell Kyle is on Morgan Edge's side, and um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, Clark makes the, the line about, it's your boss, Morgan Edge, you know, owning the Daily Planet. And Lois writes this huge article about him, and they change it up for she was Well, yeah, they show some of her do, – they show her doing some research on, um, like, New Carthage, the, the other town, and she finds things that there was um, evidence of, like, threats and extortion – um, to make his way in to do business there and different things like that. So she writes this big piece, you know, discrediting Morgan Edge. And yeah, he could, like, he rewrites her article. Which, I mean, he's not going to let anything in his paper bad be published about him. And that's kind of the problem when you get these corporation conglomerates and everything that control everything they're going to silence the truth just because they can control it um and that's i mean that speaks to our world strongly yeah it it Absolutely does. Um, and I mean, she goes into the Daily Planet. She's furious about what happened. And I mean, she had one intention and she left she left her resignation note. She like, this is the best writing I've done since she took over. All it says is I quit. Right. Um, and when she's walking into the office, you know, the sites need more clicks. Mm -hmm. Like that's all it's about anymore. Um you know, that's why a lot of people over last handful of years don't take journalism seriously um, is because now it's just any article, any any headline that'll get you clicks. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't that. have to be a story. Yep. 
news is out of con- there's context. I mean, because news comes so quick anymore, you know, no one takes time to write a thorough article, a piece that you really, you know, you read the story. It's all about the quick headline, the tidbit, and then you know, you read a headline for something. And then you open it, and you're like, this really isn't anything more than just what the headline was. There's no more details. It's very um, just generic and basic. And it's like, man, I, I want more to this. And we don't get that as much anymore. I mean, everyone out there can publish something, you know, in some sort of blog or whatever. And legitimate news sources, you know, there's few that remain or credible or people you know still follow and read uh yeah lois gets a lot more to do in this episode they they built up her suspicion of of morgan edge uh, from the very first, from the first episode, and I, I, I mean, I'm glad it's Morgan Edge. Um, he is a legitimate Superman, you know, villain, and a villain that you know has a history with Lois Clark and Metropolis. Uh, yeah, Han- uh, hands in organized crime and stuff. I hope there's some inner gang discussion. I hope so too. Um, you know, we got 15 episodes. This was only episode two, and uh, you know the it's it so far. It's it's only been the family. Um, I mean, the only new introduced characters was pretty much literally Edge and and um, the editor, the Smallville Gazette. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. So we find out the Smallville Gazette's only employee, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because she's like, you know, Lois meets her and thinks she's a fellow reporter, you know, and she's like, "Well, my editor loves your work," blah blah blah. And then we find out she's the only one, and then Lois basically gets a job there working at the Smallville Gazette, which is cool. Um, I like the idea that Clark isn't working. Like, he doesn't have a job. He's taking time for his kids. You know, he he was let go, and he's not out there trying to find a job. He's putting time back into, like, he's going to revitalize the farm and take care of his kids and, you know, work on his family. I like that a lot. Yeah, very much. He, um, Tyler's doing an excellent job. Uh, He gets to be, you know... Yeah, he's, you know, Tyler's probably like <laughs> um, uh, low 30s, young 30s, 34. something like that. He's, 34. he's 32. He's 34. Oh, 34. Okay. So he's only a year younger than us. Yep. And, uh, but, yep, I looked it up before because I was like, I was interested. He was born um, 87, mm. if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And Bitsy was born oh, okay. in eighty one. Ah, makes sense. Um, but he gets to play an older, experienced Superman. Um, you know, he does. He's not act, He's not acting younger. He's acting older. He's acting more responsible. Um, and I really see. I, I really see the him he's portraying a really good superman he's he's good at clark caring about his family and things like that and he's really good as superman um he's doing a good job i like him in both of these episodes uh the suit looks better in this episode um it but does. no what i was saying is i like him when he tells the boys to have a seat and that he um, can't abandon the world as Superman and he can't ab- abandon the boys and he's going to work on being better at both. Yes. I mean, that is such a dad thing, you know, like, you know, I mean, absolutely. One of my favorite things is just that, that idea that every, you know, as dads, like you're trying to do so much and you feel like you're failing at everything, but yet you put forward always that, like, 
I don't say the happy face, you know, but the, the idea that you've got it all under control, you got this, but really on the inside, you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, absolutely. I know we both feel like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> my kids say some stuff to me and I'm just like, and I think to myself, you are dependent on me. Like your life, your livelihood, your survival is based on me and my actions. I'm like, dear Lord, you poor children. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, but then I'm like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can, I can do this. All right. <laughs> um, so we get, we get to see Clark spending some time with Jordan this episode, which is really cool. He takes him to the fortress, uh, to run some tests because he's manifesting powers and we get to see jor for the first time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like the look of Jarrell. You know, I knew the actor, so I was like, okay. And we kind of got into it a little bit today, but I just, I don't know. He's okay. I'm not thrilled about it. Like, you know, we're, I want a Jarrell that I can feel like I can get behind because so many of our times we interact with Jarrell as the AI. And being AI always comes off colder or sterner, you know, because it's a computer. And I, I want a Jarrell where I'm like, yes, that's Papa Superman. You know, like. Well, isn't that the idea of Krypton, though? That it was cold and, for the most part, sterile. Yeah, and, but Jarrell and was supposed to break limping. That. Like, it was part, you know? part of it was like Jarrell was supposed to be like the defier of that. You know, like he was against that. He was pushing back, you know? So. But why? Like, why is Jarrell always have to look like a really old man? Like, you know, in the comics, he's always, you know, when they see him, when Cal is born, he he looks like he's in his, you know, 30s, late 20s. You know, he's always described as looking a lot like his son. Dark hair, big man. You know, and I was, and I told you, I was like, I always thought John Hamm would be a really good jor -El. Like, you know, at the time of Man of Steel or even now or whatever, like, I kind of wish that they had cast Gerard Christopher as Jarrell. I think that would have been awesome legacy casting. Um, and we have Angus here, and I'm just kind of like, mm, he's okay. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but he looked awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, he just, he, he tells of the history of Krypton, and he talks about some tests and how he'll never, how Jordan would never be like Kal El, and um, Jordan gets all frustrated with it. Um, I can see, especially after this promo, that this kid's going to get upset in every episode. <laughs> He's always going to have to throw fit. That's his anger. Like that's that's part of him. Like his anger is so. Prevalent. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of his character. Oh, the nice the thing I didn't I didn't think about before how they named him Jordan, how they named him after Jor-El. Yeah, I, I picked up on that before the series launched. Like, I, I didn't really think about that. I didn't pick up on it because I, I even told Jania, I was like, because we were talking about, it and she she said Jor. -El. I'm like, yeah, I thought the same thing until I realized Jonathan Kent and Jor-El. And the only name that makes Jor in it is Jordan. And she's like, ah, oh. I'm like, yeah. Because at first, kind of like I had that moment like when we figured out Segel was basically Siegel. Yeah. You know, like, oh, well, that makes sense now. So um, that was cool. Uh, and then, you know, because of because of the tests and everything, you get a nice scene between the boys of um, – uh, Jonathan telling him, you know, something happened, you did these things, and, you know, no matter what uh, what that says, I'll, I'll always help you out. I, I, I did like that. I, I, I like the chemistry the boys have. Uh, I think it, it feels real. Yeah, they're 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 brothers. They fight, but they got each other's back. 
That's how me you know, because when he comes down the stairs after they get back from the fortress and Jordan's all upset, um, he says, what, baby, have a hard day again? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but Lois, Lois at that point, too, she really shines through talking about how um, her and Jonathan both uh, sacrificed, but um, and, and that Jordan... You know, he's upset because things didn't go as expected. Like, that's a growing moment, too. Because things don't go how you expect is no reason to um, be angry at the world mm-hmm. and, and, and take it out on everybody else. We learned that they're keeping Jordan from going to school until Clark and him can figure it out. And Jonathan has to keep trying to come up with a reason why he's not at school. Because Sarah calls him out and says, oh, you were too sick to go to school, but your parents let you come to this, meaning the town hall. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, they got to get into that line, you know. It's their first time having to kind of be deceitful yeah. with who and what they yeah. are. And, yeah, and when they're at the, the barbecue, he says, if my parents will let me go to school. And she's like, what do you mean let you go to school? And so, like. Jordan had to cover for that. John just kind of kept quiet, but you could see he was like, like, yeah, you, you know, you got to think of something <laughs> mm-hmm. like you, like you let, you're letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me think like, you know, in the good old days of Smallville, we're all at Clark's lame excuses. I'm like, oh uh, yeah. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, those were horrible because they kept going on and on and on and on. <laughs> so let's jump over to our main man, Superman Clark. You know, in this episode, uh, it, this episode picks up pretty much where the other one left off where we see them, you know, kind of pack up, drive. Like there's that shot of them driving and unpacking and we get a scene of Clark fixing like the roof. And he flies down and, you know, the boys are standing there just kind of looking and talking to their dad and gets a wrench and he goes back up. And, you know, I, I turned to Jania and I'm like, how relieving would that be as, a, as you know, a father, as a man to just, I can be myself in front of my children. You know, there's, there's no more hiding, no more pretending, no more you know, keeping it to my secret. This, this is who I am. And you know, that's one thing about Tyler's Superman is, you know, he's going to play for the most time. He's that middle ground character now. Um, you know, he doesn't have to, he's not, cause you know, we, we see him as Superman, but we don't see him interact with many people yet as Superman only seen him interact with Sam. And we don't really see him as much of the Bumbley Clark or, you know, little bits here and there, but he gets to mainly be himself. Yeah, which is nice to see him just get to be Clark, you know. Um, like, like in the first episode, the the being proud of his son, talking to him while John was talking to his girlfriend and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think every father can relate to that, how you just feel for your kid. And you're like, yeah, buddy, how's it going? And you just you want to be excited. And even in that scene in the pilot where he's talking to his kid like that, there's a little of the bumbly Clark in there. And now he's more just this is this is me. This is how it is. And I can see that almost coming back as like a little bit of an issue because the kids will be like kind of realigning of who their dad is. Um, but we got to see him fight the stranger and this is like the, him fighting the strangers, like where it actually feels more like a CW show. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, it, it looks a bit better. Um, I mean, it's still the same, you know, but, um, it looks a bit better. I think they're doing a little bit more um, with the fight scenes. Just like, I mean, they, they almost had it reversed uh, 
Superman and Zod from Man of Steel when he's flying over him through the cornfields, punching him Mm -hmm. like Lex is Captain Luther's got him and he's flying him through the trees and Superman's punching him. And, you know, it also made me think of like in Smallville when Lex is possessed by Zod and Clark fly, like has him, and he's holding on to him, and Zod flies, and Clark's just kind of holding on to him, and they're kind of like flying through the fields. Right. Um, and I like that, you know, he he confronts him, he's fighting him, we got some great shots of Tyler in the suit, and like you said, the suit looked better. The one that I did I did realize after some thought and everything and hearing people talk about it, it's the neck. Because I'm looking at the different Superman suits. This neck is up high like the Superman Returns neck was. It doesn't have the lower neckline, like below the clavicle and everything. Like, it's right. up high. And I'm like, that's part of why it's just, it's like, oh, okay. I see, I see it now. Like, I feel it now that that's been kind of... Um, well, it, in in like the pilot, you could see that it was really, really heavy up in the top, in the shoulders, and in the chest, in the chest, and everything, right up to the to the neck. And in certain shots, you could see that it just that it was fully padded out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, looks like they tweaked it a little bit between the shooting the pilot and this one um, because it doesn't. It doesn't look so padded. It's kind of brought down and and got and has more of a natural curvature to it. It's still a padded suit, but they they tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, I, I, like you said, I feel like it's going to progress and get better. You know, just little tweaks here and there as they you know realize stuff as they're filming. Like, oh, we could change this. We could do this. Um. And, um, you know, when he fought the captain, like, he's doing really well. And then, you know, the captain, Captain Luther, sends his ship out. His ship, you know, Superman takes the ship with a bomb on it and throws it in space and explodes. And I was like, well, dang, like, what's what's Captain Luther's base now? You know, it looked like he was operating out of a ship and that was like, that was everything to him. And now I'm like, nope. And yeah. Well, that's that's still, you know, that still make, shows Lex being or Luther being uh, the bad guy, uh, mm-hmm. you know, even I mean, he's fighting a war, you know, but to him, it's like people are going to die yeah. um, collateral damage. To, to him. Collateral damage. Yeah, he's he's sending a bomb to kill innocent people so he can get away. Um, I mean, it's still. It's still the bad guy move, even though he's in his mind, he's fighting a war. Um, but and and that just kind of proves that this Earth's Kal-El isn't the same as the Kal-El from the Earth he was on, which we get to see uh, at in the closing moments of this of this episode. But. That this this Kal-El puts innocent lives over catching the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, just to kind of piggyback off that, you know, we know that he is supposed to be some remnant of Crisis. So I was thinking, okay, on Batwoman and Supergirl both had examples of, like, two people on the same world at the same time and what happened. And then I'm like, well, this is kind of a different Lex. And I was thinking, well, maybe his suit protects him. Well, we see that Superman fights him and destroys the suit, and it was a robot. So he don't have a suit. I'm like, okay. And we see that he actually appeal, uh, appeal uh, I can't talk, appeals to Sam about being a soldier fighting, you know, and how, how long will it be until Superman's not on their side? And it was interesting because you could tell Sam was like, oh, okay. And I'm wondering, you know, will Sam be good? Well, he won't. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can see that him being a soldier, um, 
he's thought about it. Um, we see from the scene that from the from the scene of them in his office that Sam has been stockpiling all the kryptonite on the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says to make sure that nobody can get it and use it against Clark. Um, you know, uh, it, you, you can see that in this, in this version, you know, that he's still the Sam Lane from that. We know that he was, um, more concerned about being a military man than he was about being a father. Um, and that he's the antithesis to everything that Clark was raised on. You know, he is the opposite of Jonathan. Yeah, the simple life, um, which which he, you know, which is when he finds out that they told the boys that he's Superman. Um, you know, yeah, Sam was mad. And... Uh, you know, Clark has connection with, you know, with the idea that Sam feels like he has a higher calling, moral obligation, you know, a soldier and Clark in some way can connect to that. But at the same time, Clark's struggling to be the better father than Sam ever was. Um, so it's interesting to see that dynamic. And then the big cliffhanger um, is that we see a shot that Sam was a soldier alongside Captain Luther on another Earth. Um, and we see Superman in the black costume that we had seen in Elseworlds, heat vision, and just, like, destroy soldiers. And they were part of some special squadron in Hell. Because like he has a like um, it's like a a diamond, you know. It's not the crest symbol, but it's like a f perfect four-sided diamond-looking uh, Kryptonian look, you know, symbol. Where it's like a play off the Superman shield or something, because it's like it has a point on both ends, and you know he has this like hell, and he turns around, it looks like four three one one, and. It was just kind of a twist that, you know, he was from an Earth with a bad Superman. And I thought it was 4377. Was that and what it was? You flip it over, it kind of looks like hell. But the way the H is, I think it's more like a 4. I think the number has something to do with with it more than, than it's saying hell. Yeah, I thought that was just kind of a nice little, like, kind of wink nod. Like, oh, hell, they were in hell. Like, ha, oh, oh. ha. Right. <laughs> um, you know, with Oliver Queen. I spent four years in hell. Yeah. And, uh, uh you know, the, the computer tells Luther, you know, you, you don't have any, you're going to have to do this without kryptonite and without your ship. So he says he needs to build a new suit and the computer says it's going to take time for them to locate the materials to be able to build another war suit. So we may, we may get a, we we probably we probably won't see Superman versus Captain Luther again for a short time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I, we'll see what he's doing to build a new suit. Maybe we'll get to see a little bit of what he's up to. But um, I mean, yeah, I, like I don't think we'll get to see up them up as like himself, like in the town or whatever. I mean, first he's going to stick out because we haven't seen many people of color in Smallville. Um, but the other thing is just, um, it'd be kind of interesting him trying to get to know this Clark, uh, this kal uh, like personal and try, like I told you before, like maybe like try to get Jordan on his side or something like that. You know, um, he hangs around them without them realizing that it, who it is because they don't know what he looks like outside this suit. Um, I think Clark would hear the voice. I mean, yeah, I would think. I would think. I, I would think. I would assume. Um, um, but I don't, I don't know. You know. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll see. I mean, 
to find the materials for the suit. I doubt he's going to be hanging around Smallville for that. So I don't know. I, I really, uh, you know, this this Superman story is at a time and and incorporating, you know, not not really incorporating a story. It's a, it's a totally original Superman story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to actually predict exactly what's going to happen. I think, I think we've done a decent job of, of finding out and, and predicting certain things, but yeah, I'm I mean, sure there's going to be a lot of stuff that we don't, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, did you this is only episode two. So, um, <clears throat> did you ever read, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Superman's secret identity. Uh, no, that is not one I've read yet. It's been years since I read it. And I remember the storyline. I was kind of a little confused and it was supposed to be something like one of those where it's Clark Kent on like our earth and like, he doesn't have powers and, but everyone kind of picks on him because this character named Superman, you know, has this. And he talks about how in his life, so many things matched up. Like he married a woman named Lois Lane. And then they they have two twin girls, um, in that story. So, uh, I just thought it was very interesting of, you know, the twins and kind of concept that we see here. And I, I need to revisit that book just to see if there's anything they are kind of pulling from it, if not, or if, if nothing else, it's just interesting to reread it. Um, are we thinking he's on, I wouldn't, well, are we thinking that this Luthor is from what would have been like the, the standard Earth 3, you know, like crime syndicate planet? I mean, you know, it's possible. That's Ultraman. I mean, he was wearing a, a S, an S shield. Um, so true, true. I mean, it is Ultraman, and, but this is you know, it's it's for TV. It's adaption, and yeah, exactly. And it and it could it could be that. Um, it could be a, a reference to Injustice or something similar. See, Injustice kind of makes me interested just because if they did an Injustice thing, um, we all know that um, in Injustice, the reason was because of, you know, Lois's death. And, um, and I think they would keep that, you know, because Sam is involved. Um, but I do like, you know, he's from a, a planet where Superman went bad. Clark went bad. And if it's an amalgam of the two, that's cool. So, I mean, will they eventually maybe... I don't want to say become friends, but find a, a middle ground, you know, um, to this. And how is he still there post crisis? Like, I feel like this character is where and why the connection to the greater CW mythology kind of, you know, the Arrowverse intersects. Right. So, um, you know, you're yeah. talking about how it was like, how we experience some doppelgangers uh, on the Earth, Batwoman and, and on Supergirl. Um, I, I have a question. Was it only Batwoman that Beth and Alice uh, were dying because each other were there? Or was it – because I don't recall that happening on Supergirl, on Supergirl how any, how they many were... of the doppelgangers were – They were in the were bar. ill or anything. Well, they were in the bar – and it, it was like the Brainiac, and then they bottled some of them. Uh, it was one of those, like, it happened so quickly. Like, in the episode, they didn't focus on it. But they just talked about there were doppelgangers and things were happening. Um, so, I'd have to go back and revisit it. But, you know, in Bat Ones, where they really stressed what was going on, I know it was kind of touched on lightly in Supergirl. You know, and that was kind of like the whole bottling thing that Brainy went into. But what would you rate this episode? Um, I mean, I, I was thoroughly enjoyed by it, and, and it progressed 
every character, every main character, and what they're doing in their lives. All four people you see on the front, on every picture, on every poster for this show here, the family. Um, it, it progressed each one of them and in their stories and their plot and uh, their character evolutions. Uh, really good episode. I mean, I, I give it a nine. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to watch it again before, uh, before episode three comes out. Um, I still have to watch it with Jamie. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll be, I'll be watching it at least one more time. I would give it a nine as well. Um, I like everything that's going on. It's developing. I just constantly want more. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of Superman, duh. But, you know, I, I like the Smallville Superman, a lot of him, like, in his daily life and the things he gets into and using his powers, you know, and some right. of not having this. And, and you know what? Speaking of more, that's a great segue into it got renewed for season two. Booyah. We did not talk about that. We were gonna drop it. You just uh, yeah. I um, think I think that was the perfect transition into the news that we have a second season of Superman and Lois coming, and you know how however this season plays out, however the cin- cinematography goes, or if it get, gets to CW, we'll we'll see how the first season goes, and we're gonna get a second one. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I like, it was like the highest CW show with like so many categories and all this. And my wife even talked to a friend of ours who he's a cool dude, but like, he doesn't like Superman. He's definitely more of like the Batman, more anti-hero worshiper. And, right. um, he, and he was like, no, you should check it out. Like, it's just a good show. And I like that. You know, Tyler is getting a lot of positivity for his portrayal. Like, it's nice to see our favorite character talked about in a mainstream of positivity. It's just, it's refreshing. Yeah, you know, he had some ups and downs in his appearances. His first appearances were great, and then then they were a little up and down throughout the rest. But nothing I, nothing I hated. And um, two episodes in, and... Like, he's doing a great job. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky. 